Welcome back, everyone, to Come On Now, the podcast. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma with the one, the only three time Grey Cup champion, Nick Taylor. Are there anyone, is there anyone else that's won three Grey Cups, Nick, besides you? Yeah, Warren Moon won five in the oh, I thought, I, oh, man, I thought you were special. <laughs> I thought you were special for a second. No, there's God, a couple man. players that have won three. Uh, yeah, a lot of players that's currently playing that's won three so far. Uh, it's 19, oh, wow. so yeah. some people. You know, it's 19. There's so many people that don't have any during that amount of time. So yeah. it's it's crazy. You'd be like, how how the hell that happens? Uh, well, but, well, we you know we know who Nick is now, so we don't have to go through this introductory thing anymore. Um, and you know who I am by now. I probably made you offended you in some capacity by this point, or, I, or you love me a lot because it's usually this or this. It's never this. Um, but as you know, we've made a big announcement. You know, we came out with Come On CFL featuring Nick Taylor. Um, the first episode dropped today, so if you haven't seen it, please do go check it out. And we partnered with Bet99 out of Canada for the Come On CFL show. So if you are in Canada, please get on with that. Our um, sign-up code is COMEON99 with all capital letters, C-O-M-E-O-N-9-9. But let's get right into it, Nick. Yep. Bronny James was drafted. I did a rant about it the day he was drafted. Yep. But now they've had the introductory press conference, and he's already signed a contract that is four times as much as last year's number 55 pick, who happens to be former University of Miami uh, point guard, shooting combo guard, Isaiah Wong, yep. who was ACC player of the year. What are your thoughts on Bronny James signing a four-year, $7.9 million deal with a fourth-year team option, which is four times what the, the previous 55th pick, probably the largest 55th, 55th uh, pick contract in NBA history? All right. Let's clear the air. All right. Obviously, LeBron James has a part of this. Okay. We understand that he is a part of this. I mean – End of the day, LeBron James has – let's get Bronny. I'm sorry. Bronny's a good player. I like him. I, I like what he brings to the team. I think that you can develop him into a solid role player. I, I, I think you can. He can shoot the ball. He's athletic. He can defend. I, I like those qualities about him. And he's humble. He don't come in there with the – he don't talk, you know, come in there with the bravado that he's LeBron James. So at least that's not how it – he seems in the press conference. Seems like a real cool guy. He understands that he has to work his way on the court and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, this will happen. LeBron James in 20 years was still that damn good to hold the Lakers by their balls. And they couldn't do shit about it. Nobody has been this good for that long to hold a team to 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 these to, to this you know, to this needle to them like LeBron can. Nobody has been this good. So when you said this is setting a, pre a precedent, no, it's not because nobody else will be this good for that long and have a kid at this age of freaking 18 and still be good at 30, 36, 38, 39, 37, 38, and be able to do what LeBron has done. This is a once in a lifetime situation. And I'm happy for them because LeBron good. He, he's an amazing player still. He's a top 10 player. What in the Lakers? They, what are they gonna do? Let him walk? No, LeBron wasn't gonna walk anyway. They could have threatened him. They could have seen if he was gonna do it, but he wasn't gonna walk anyway. So, I think they actually got Bronny James because they like the you know the potential that they see in him. JJ Redick wants to develop players. Bronny James is a player that you'll be able to develop. At the end of the day, he's already bringing in money to the organization. He has. He has the top-selling jersey right now. It's going crazy. He's bringing – they're going to – in Las Vegas, people are going to see him as the 55th pick. Yeah, this is not the usual situation. This is not a regular player at 55. You know, he comes with a lot because of his dad. And we got to accept it. Y'all crying about it when when other players – oh, he, he took somebody's spot at 55. Fuck that. I don't give a damn about that shit because there's been situations where, where 
who, who cares about the 55th pick? Um, I'm going to ask you this question, Rudy. I know you know this one player. You know Isaiah Wong. Who is Guy Santos? No idea. Okay. Aaron Wiggins, you might know him. So you're going to go and start naming off them the number 55 Jay, pick in the draft? Jay Scrubs. Kyle Guy. Arnaldo Kubuka. I know, I, I know who Pat, Patty Mills is. Nigel Williams. You know how long ago was that? Etu, I, know how, I know who Etuan Moore is. Yes. That was 13, 14 what, years what is, ago. Again, and you know who – so are we going to go specifically by the number of the pick? Or are we going to go – Do you know and, any and, second and – All right, so any second – Wait, wait, wait. Any, any second round pick that's listen, good? Listen, listen, good. listen, listen. Please listen. tell me – ask me that question. No. I beg you. I so, beg you. Name the best a, player in the listen, NBA listen. is a second round pick. Are you gonna let me speak, or are you gonna keep talking? Oh, because you were gonna ask me, that and I was about to. Oh, that's not what I was gonna ask you. You're not a mind reader, so don't oh, try to read my mind. Okay. I'm name the, name a pick over fifty plus that that name that was good. Okay, so if you said forty, I could have told you. Yo, name Joker. a pick fifty. I can't plus. think of that. I wasn't prepared for that question. <laughs> okay. I literally give I literally give you a fucking synopsis before we start. Of what the hell we're doing. So you looked all that crap up so you can ask me that question. Enrique Freeman. No. Enrique Who? Freeman at 50. Whatever, whatever. You can name. I don't no. know. No, I don't. Bern Ajinka, Quentin Post, Cam You're... Spencer, Antoine Watson, Go Kevin ahead. McCuller. Na name them all. Kevin McCuller, I know he played at Kansas, actually. All Rich Kamoche. Okay, Ariel. Name... All right, man. All right. All right. Exactly. You couldn't, you couldn't name fucking six of the top 10 picks in, this year, Nick. You have no the, idea who they are. So on the day two of the NBA so why draft. Why did they draft him in the top 10 then? On the day two of the NBA draft. Who they are. We were watching. We were watching. I wasn't watching. We didn't even know the draft was going on that people, day. Because we people, thought it was that night. People were paying attention, Rudy. You might not have been. You weren't. You but didn't people. see it. I, and I you said, love him. I said people. Overall, people. Were okay, so people. you weren't one of those people. Okay, so as long as you acknowledge you weren't one of those people. Okay, but damn about the draft. Really? Because yeah, I don't know none of them. Great. They, and, and there they, was, they had a day two because of him. Yes, and it's, and it's complete bullshit, which tells you the whole thing was fucking rigged. Because the whole thing is rigged. This wasn't nothing. Because this it's never happened again. And that's kudos to LeBron. Oh, for no, it, it, it could happen again in worse ways, actually. Yeah, but, kudos you know, to LeBron for getting his son yeah, opportunity Le to LeBron play with James him because we'll never see it again. And that's a damn great moment that a father who everybody cry about making an opportunity for their kid. This man makes an opportunity for his kid who can play basketball. Not like he came, he played fucking golf. He played basketball and he's pretty good at it. He you know, sucks. His, his numbers okay. He sucks a right guy now. Who, a guy he who sucks guy right now. Battle back from a near death situation. I don't care. This is not a fucking charity league. Had a, and had a decent. And had a decent. decent. No, he, not, he was not combine. decent. Combine. He was combine. not decent. Combine. Against other NBA players that he he's going was, against. So decent. Com oh, com I'm sorry. Yeah, because you couldn't. You couldn't say decent. College basketball season. That, that, it doesn't matter. It was it doesn't matter. Trash. It's not what he's doing anymore. He's in the combine. Right, bro. He, yeah, he's in the combine. He got murdered by guys that were the fucking that were switching on him. He can't dribble. Okay. He, he made one three Rudy, in Rudy. fucking in, in one of the if, combines. If, one of those things. He if, can't if, make. If Chris Paul, Job Morant, or any one of these small guards gets switched on bigger people, they're gonna get killed also. So Chris Paul's one of the best defensive guards in the fucking league. What are you talking get, about? First if, career. He gets, if he gets switched on a six, 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 seven, six, eight player. All right, man. Now you now, now you've now compared Bronny James to Chris Paul. I love it. No, I'm not comparing the, quick, I'm the, quick, the quickness, the quickness of Chris Paul and his skill is eons above LeBron James. You talk about switching. If, if you're gonna play Yes, and when Chris Paul Kyle Lowry is able to do shit at 6-1 that Bronny James will never do. Yeah, Kyle Lowry also has a backpack. Oh, oh are you going to make are you, are you, is what, 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 what? Kyle Lowry has a backpack in his backpack. They say what else? All right, so there's, so there's your excuse for that one. He Kyle Lowry 6-1. He, he could hulk, he could, he could hulk her down. He could, uh, uh, okay. Uh, and, all right, so I'm, I'm listening to the how many? Are you, you want to make the list of the excuses? I'm just saying, man. Nobody gave a damn about the second round pick until this guy came out this year. No, the fact that, that, nobody cared well, about. Well, you know what? Round. Nobody knew. Nobody. All right, bro. Nobody, yeah, you're right. No one cared about the second round. You're right. The best nobody player in the attention. NBA. The best player in the NBA today is Nikola Jokic. He was number 42 pick in the draft. So do right. not do not tell me that the second round picks do not matter. We have a league that is literally half a league of second round picks. <laughs> And undrafted free agents. The Miami Heat roster has six guys that were undrafted. Undrafted. For a second round. 
undrafted, Not which actually point. means there's nothing to be offended by if they had actually done it the right way and taken him as an undrafted free agent mm-hmm. who actually picked someone was- who deserves to be drafted with the draft. The five the draft. Five picks away. I don't give a fuck if it was one three, pick away. Three picks away from undrafted. I don't care if he was number 60 or 59. That's what we're crying about. I don't we're care. Crying. What if somebody this else picked him up? This what is a somebody... credibility issue. Here's the reality. LeBron James extorted the Lakers. That's what he did. He extorted their asses. And you know what? More power to him. He played the joke, that, the big joker in his spades deck, and he extorted their asses. He, he should be a member of the freaking Gambino family or something like that because to watch a multi-billionaire bend over to a washed-out fucking star. Let's be real. LeBron James is at the end of his fucking rope. They are not going to win a championship. He is not a top-ten player right now, which Man. we didn't get into last time. He a name? Oh, this is easy then. Because I remember last time you said LeBron and AD are two of the top 12 players, yes. which is embarrassing no. to say that no, when they can't not. win 48 games. No. And they've never been, they've been better than the seven seed one time in six years. So don't sit here and tell me that you know he's not a top 10 player anymore. Because if he was a top 10 player, they could get out of the, they wouldn't be a seven seed. Wade was a top five player, and we and we and we were forty fucking two and. What 40. are you talking about? He didn't have fucking Anthony Davis next to him. Are you kidding so, me? So we never seen. So two he top had. Players. So we never Bro. seen two top players struggle before. What a struggle! It's a team game. Really? It's a team really? game. Healthy, yeah, older, healthy. Older. Because you're a really good flip flopper. Because I remember you saying all these guys were healthy last year, and it's embarrassing that they were fucking. An it is embarrassing. But so, so well, pick one. It's either embarrassing or it's not. And if you're that damn good, you should be at least a four or five seed, and not an eight seed, a ten seed. The West a is week bad. and a half before the season ended. The what? Teams. The teams. Every all team. Right, they were good teams. And you think? And you and you would take De- D'Angelo Russell in a Miami heat jersey right now I would. and you probably take austin reeves in a heat jersey I right would. now I would. and you probably take Rui hachimura in a heat jersey I would. right now so I would. if you take all those guys in a heat jersey right now yep. those were their five starters yep. they didn't defend and you know who doesn't defend at all anymore in a regular season lebron james because he can't because his body doesn't allow it anymore so he's not a top 10 player anymore he's Luka. not he's a better defender than luca and Luca's averaging thirty-five. And LeBron's doing right. uh, 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 comparable to what uh, he does. Uh, we're I mean, not we have, okay. You're doing that same shit with Diana Taurasi. I don't give a fuck if you want to play basketball, and if you're the guy on the court. Man, guess what? Man. I don't care how old you are. I do not care anymore because you know what? Tom Brady won a Super Bowl at forty-four. Name so, nine others. Nine others? Yep. Really? Yep. We've done this before. I'm waiting for it. Joker, Giannis, yeah. Embiid, um, da, 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 da. fucking uh, da, 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 da. Jo- da, da, da. Joker, Giannis, Embiid, J- Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, um, shit. Let's see here, Luca. You made Donald another- get up and walk away. Huh? What? You made Donald get up and walk away. Well, he no one could see him, genius. Oh. <laughs> Psst. Kawhi Leonard is still better. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Kevin That's Durant. nine. Durant okay, not better than not, oh, Kevin Durant's not better than LeBron James. Nope. Okay. You, you think Kevin Durant over LeBron James? No. Absolutely. Way. You wouldn't take Kevin Durant over LeBron drugs. James right now? You're on drugs. You're you would on not drugs. take Kev- Devin nobody, Booker. No, nobody. You would, no, you, I wouldn't. Dame you would Lillard. Take, you wouldn't take Devin Booker over LeBron right now. Stop Fuck it. Yeah, I would. Stop it. He's 20 years old. Over LeBron right now. You would take a 39 year old over. Man, He's come better on, than man. him. He's still better than him right now. He's not. Just because he fucking shoots a lot of threes now. At 40%. Oh, man. Dude, whatever. And a year ago, he shot 49%. So, uh, what are we talking about? They are not the team that they should be with two of the top 12 players in the league. I agree. I agree. But he's. That means they're not to the top 12. No, that doesn't mean that. No, it's a team sport at the end of the day. And and according to you, you take all of their starters on the Miami Heat roster right this second. And I won't take. And and the fucking. The Heat and the Lakers were a game apart on the record. And I wouldn't take nobody on their bench on our fucking team. Yes, you would. Who? Yes, the fuck you would. Who? Yes, you would. Kareem Prince? Who? The, the really? big guy, the big guy really? who can't walk who, and chew who, gum who, at the who, same who's time. On, who's, on the, who's on the Heat roster right now on the bench? Duncan. Duncan should start. That's the problem. Ice Smith. 
Ty Smith will be gone, and the, and the, he's gonna be gone. Talking about, we're talking about last year. You think I wouldn't take Tory and Prince over Haywood Highsmith? Fuck no, yeah, I would. No, absolutely. You think I wouldn't take in Jared Haywood, Vanderbilt over Haywood, Haywood Highsmith? Absolutely. Vanderbilt, get the. I would take Jared Haywood. Vanderbilt over Haywood Highsmith. Are you the, crazy? Oh Hay- God. Haywood could. Hay- Haywood. I would could, take. I would take broke leg gay Vincent back on my team over the bums we have on our bench right now. No way. Because we know how to use them. Okay, but. How he, he played over him. he was hurt. He didn't even play. Oh, by the way, him. just just to remind you, the number fifty five pick, Louis Scola. I know I'm sure you've heard his name before. Oh, um, two thousand and freaking six. What does it matter? You keep fucking. Don't You're ask him. The last, Nick, 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 the last ten Nick, years. I, the last what ten it? years. What does so you so is that how you justify everything? The last ten years. Yes. Oh, okay. That's 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 your uh, criteria. Yeah, of course. No problem. Who was so, the twenty first pick of the draft last year? The twenty first. Yeah, don't look it up. You should know no, it. No, Everyone no. knows, right? I have no, no idea what this. That's what I'm asking you. No. What were the last ten years but, of that pick? I bet he's probably still in the fucking league. You and do, I, and and I bet most of the 55 picks are not in the league or not even close in the league. So they might not even made it from over in Europe to bet to the league or the G League to the league. So cut it out. Stop really? The, stop the shenanigans. Stop. Cut the shenanigans. Cut the really? shenanigans. Cut the shenanigans. The number cut 21. The, the number 21 pick for the for the uh was last year was Noah Clowney. Who is that? You don't know Noah Clowney? Do you? No. <laughs> hey, all right, man. Hey, but you know what I would have did though? I, I'll tell you one thing I would have did. If I was the Boston Celtics, Boston Celtics, they I would have the, drafted him. I would have oh drafted him to spike God. the Lakers. Oh my gosh. Boston Celtics had the draft in their hands. They must have got a okay. call from Adam Silver who told them, don't fuck this up, don't mess around. But the Boston Celtics, who are the Lakers' arch rivals, had the chance would, to draft him at 54 and say, Rich Paul, if you're going to send him to Australia, send him to fucking Australia. He won't be in the league. He won't be playing with his damn dad today. Uh, I would have drafted him. Oh, I, I would have drafted him and said, at Boston, oh, yeah. just, just, to be, just to be a mother freaking dick, I would have drafted oh, him. I, at, I, they, had, I, I, they, had the, they had the draft in their hands. And, and I want to see Le- I wanted to see Bronny go there, but just for the fun of it, because Rich Paul tried to stronghold the league, and a lot of agents do that with their player. You know, they 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 make their player to go undrafted because they they prefer them to go to a team of their of their choice, so they have a better odds to look at the roster. But oh my gosh, oh Lord have mercy! So Rich Paul really ain't do nothing bad in that situation that most agents don't. But the Boston Celtics had a golden opportunity to fuck them up, and they did it. They let it slip through their hands. I would have did it. I would have fucking did it. <laughs> oh, my I, God. I, I, I would have done it, too, and I would have said, hop on a plane and go fly to Australia. Oh, okay. yes, for sure. Show, for sure. show me show me that you're really going to do that. And we, won a champ- and we won a championship in our roster. Yeah, so, 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 I'm gonna, so I'm in a championship team. So where would, you Ross- rather, where would you rather be if you're Bronny James, the Boston Celtics or the Los Angeles Lakers? I want the security of my daddy. <laughs> no, I, I, I want I want to win. Yeah, that's true, but shit. I wanna... he, has the, he already has the security of his daddy. But I want Bronny to... James is a multimillionaire. Yeah, I get that, but you still want to play basketball. And again, well, according to you, he's a great shooter. No, I said he has the ability. According to you, he's a great shooter. I said he has a a nice oh, form that right. like if you work on it, he could be a good. Shooter, works good so, what, what type of offense does the Boston Celtics run? Five out. That actually fits him a whole lot better than standing in the fucking corner, waiting to get a ball past him by his dad. <laughs> hey, I, I, I have a real pro- I, look. My problem with this whole deal is that first of all, it's this was extortion. You can it's not nepotism. So nepotism, the definition of nepotism, people clearly don't know it. Um, really, really well. It used it, it. It originated on parents hiring relatives or parents hiring their kids. Not, I tell, I ask my boss to hire you. It, 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 it it's morphed into that. So but nobody this wasn't. Nobody this, was, this, this wasn't done as an I'm asking. This was not an ask. This was a. This was. I don't care what they said. They're lying, which we know. We because a week earlier, Rich Paul got on the mic and said, "Oh." LeBron doesn't care anymore. He's gotten past that. And then in a week later, it's you. If you draft Bronny, he's flying to Australia, which we know that was bullshit too, because no one was in the draft in period. So now you're so this was a, a situation. I believe the draft should be earned. I believe there's there's to compare professional sports in athletic in the athletic arena to jobs in the real world is flawed. It's not the same thing. There, it's not the same thing. 
Why and not? most most it's because number one, it's not. It just isn't. Because no, there's still you can't just tell me it's not and then it's not really. Um, because the draft is earned and historic it's always been earned. I've oh, never seen a should it's your job be earned? If I own the company and I and I'm dumb enough to hire my son at 20 to be my chief operating officer, I deserve the fate I get. So right? Yeah, he's, so, not a, he's not prepared. So you, Nick, Nick Arison, for example, he is the, the CEO of the Miami Heat. Yeah. I remember Nick Arison because I used to cover the Hurricanes basketball games. Mickey Arison would be at games with Nick Arison all the time when he was, in, when he was a kid. That guy did every job in the Miami Heat organization. He didn't just become the fucking CEO at 20. So he, he, Let me finish. He, did, he sold tickets. He did marketing. He did every get community affairs. He didn't just become the fucking pr the, pr okay. the CEO of the team. Okay, that took a that took over. He was a bad boy for the Olympic team. Okay. Like, there's a process. Okay, the process in in actual athletics is that you earn it through your performance in college, or if you run a four point oh nine. Um, you're supposed to notice that. <laughs> Or yeah. if you were in a 4.09. But there's nothing on the resume that earned it. I've covered travel ball, high school ball for years. You know this. I've seen high school players. His entire resume, the ranking of the, uh, the ranking was manipulated. The McDonald's All-American game, manipulated. None of that shit was earned. He's a very good high school player. What is a very good high school player? A three-star athlete. Three-star athletes are not one and dones anywhere, ever, ever. And his numbers in college, look, the heart condition aside, this is what he would have been last year. I don't know that. I don't know you, that. Well, why do you not? He was a 12-point scorer in high school. Okay. He was not a point guard in high school. He didn't run a team in high school. He's not quicker than Chris Paul at 40, at 39. He's not, he's not shifty like that. He has great hops. He can jump real fucking high. That's why most of the highlights you see are him dunking. He also managed to shrink three inches from what he'd been listed as for the last three and a half, four years. Man, I've seen so a he's, a six, he's a six one and a, whatever you saw, he was listed as six four. He's been pumped at six four. He's six one and a half. And that makes him a point guard. A no, real a small point guard. Not anymore. Not anymore. Nick, stop being, see, see, you're just being argumentative to be argumentative. No, I'm just saying, see, not you're anymore. You're just being argumentative to be argumentative. Basketball is positionless for the most part, man. He's a if guard. If you're 6'1 and a half, guard. you're a matchup disaster if you're not amazingly so skilled. Guard the point guard. He's not, so he's he's not, not, he can't guard a point guard. That's the point. The Why he can't guard a point he, guard? Nick, because he, he doesn't have that ability. He's not a quick enough. He's not that quick. Man, the man can move. The man can move solid, solid, real solid. Read, it, read, read his scouting reports, Nick. I, I know you want to read like it. Read him. We're going to get a You like him based on what? You've not watched him play. Yes, I have seen him play. And I like Where? everything I've seen. Where? Seen Where play. did you watch him play? The I combine? Play USC, and I've seen, I seen him play in high school a if little bit. If you watched him at USC and you're and saying I, that you like him based on UFC, then you're, then you, then you're full I, of shit. I've seen some things. Because you're a some, smart guy. i see some things I like. Okay, Rudy, you're tell, a, tell me. Yeah, I like he, he, and his dad is LeBron. That means he's been around. Again, you're he, going back. You're no, going no, back to what you're around, talking about. He's been, a, he's, no, he's been around NBA type of basketball is, and training and regimen. Nick, Nick, and Nick, Nick, I, for this. Stop, stop, it, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're full he's of prepared. shit. And I know you're, you're trolling and me. And you, you want to be like. No, no. And, we, and then when you're talking I, about, you're talking about, oh, Nicky Harrison and all that shit. Okay. No, he's, you made a comparison. He's going to earn his How? He's going to be. He's gonna, How? He's How? Gonna How do you he's, earn it? How do you earn it when you don't go to the G League? He's going to be in the summer league. He's gonna summer be in the G league. G League. He's going to be practicing. So, he's going to so, be grabbing. So if he averages four. So if he averages four. Oh, what is he doing? So if he. First of all, he's not going to the G League. They've already told you that, Nick. That's what it get. That's what that four year, seven point nine million dollar contract says. He won't be in the G League. He'll be not there. for one fucking second. I'll He'll bet be you. There. No, He'll he won't. Be He'll be there. Nick, a little bit. G League, little bit. No, he won't. G League guys are on two way deals. He'll They're not be. fucking sending him to the fuck. You get on here in fucking October and you tell me I'm right. When I, when he, he will not see the G League. We're going and if he, and if he, that's the point of the damn fucking two way. That's the point of his contract. He'll never see the G League. He's a, he has a guaranteed 15-man roster spot. Those guys don't go to the G League. They don't go to the G League. He's going to get reps in the G League. 
All right, bro. We we draft. We talking about his first runners that go in the G League. Yes, he won't go. He will. Nick, the point of this was from the play with his daddy. Really? So now you're gonna send him to the G League. He will not. He will not. He will open the night in fucking LA, and he might be the starting point guard. Oh, okay. And if he is, and if he is, you will see what the JJ Redick. You know what? Who was gifted his fucking job? That was a nepotism move. Yes. For sure, the most unqualified fucking NBA coach right now in the league, whose arrogance, oh my God, what, what about loses and, and and him with the Bronny's part of our Bronny earned it. And we never saw this before. Steve a, Nash, Steve Nash, huh? Steve Nash. Uh, yeah, Steve Nash actually though was a Hall of Famer and had a career that would make JJ so, Reddick so look like seen, dog hold on, shit. We've seen bad we've seen a lot of co- coaches who turn out to be great coaches were average players for the most part. If no, you're, you're right. Absolutely. You're, most of the better coaches are average players. Okay. okay. And you know what they also did before they got the job? They were assistants. For the most part, yeah. Yes, for the most part. So we have a guy who literally was again another manipulation. This was extortion again. A podcast, and now three months later, the podcast is canceled. The man, been, the man, been, of course, it's gonna be canceled now. They're on the they're I the know it's canceled, player. that's the whole point. It was a it's setup. Player. They had to do that now. Are you do you guys really believe the shit you say, or you just fucking say it because you want to fucking sound cute and nice? No, and not be mean. I, I don't know what JJ Reddick does not, JJ Reddick did not deserve that job. And people want to sit here and tell me a lot JJ Reddy did not co- deserve that job. A lot of coaches don't deserve that. That's job. not true, man. Yes, man. That's not true. Sam what did Eric Spolster do? What did Eric Spolster do to get his job? Sam Cassell still doesn't have a job. And you know he's getting yeah, fucked. Job. And you want to know why he got? You know how he just got fucked by JJ Reddick. Oh, because the other teams couldn't hire him. What other? What, the, the, there was other coaching jobs. What are you talking about, Charlotte? There was other coaching. Who, who did Charlotte hire? Detroit. Who try, who Detroit hire? Uh, my guy. Um, your guy. I don't know who your guy is. Biggest staff. Who, who was the head coach at Cleveland, right? Yeah. All right, so a guy with actual experience. I'm, I'm talking about the guys who got hired with no fucking experience well, ahead of Sam Cassell. Who got hired with no basketball coaching experience in front of Sam Cassell? Steve Nash. <laughs> Steve Nash was hired five years ago, Nick. I'm or six saying. years ago and got fired. So it who happened. was hired this year in front of San Yes, because Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving chose him. It happened. And in the year they wanted to fire him. It and he was a failure. It happened. He was That's a failure. It happened, man. Again, he was a failure. This is, good. this is good for the sport. We'll never see it again. Most of the, no, you, you, you might. What you're going to see will be worse shit. No, we're not. Because what nobody you see else is will be worse this, shit. Nobody else will be this good for this long to be able. What's the goal? What's the goal? What's the goal of the, what's the goal? Let me ask you a question. What's the goal of the of an NBA franchise or any sports franchise? To win a championship. No, it's not. No, it's and not. to make money. It's to make money. Yeah. All right. It's to make money. So Let, let's 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 stop lying to ourselves. Some people because, want to win a championship. Most of, people, these, most, of these, most of these owners don't know dick about the sport. They some, have these teams for an ego to stroke their dicks, and they're. The, the, they, they want to win, but they're they really want to make money. Money is all they care about. Most of them lose which is, money. Something they, which is why which is why most of these owners won't pay into the luxury tax because all they care about is making money. But and that's what it do. is. It's a business, right? Will the Lakers make money without Bronny James? Yes. Will they make? Will they, are they the franchise they are without Bronny James? Yes. Are they going to win a championship with Bronny James? At period, this year or next year? The answer is no. I don't know. They're not closer. They didn't. They no one wanted to play with LeBron. James Harden said no. Jonas Valanciunas said no. Clay Thompson said no. Clay Thompson, who grew up a Lakers fan, and his dad played for the Lakers, and he, and his dad's pissed. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I he's very it. he's very saddened. He says he said no. Everyone said no. I think Dalton Connect was a steal at yeah. seventeen. Amazing. He, I'm, he, I'm mad we didn't steal. draft him. I'm mad we didn't draft him. Uh, I am too. A steal. Because I would have traded Tyler Hero and he would have stepped up into that position and I would have had a cheaper Tyler Hero because well, he does you, the you, same you thing probably yeah, better. Did. Yeah, you would have gotten him for nothing because for he was nothing, right there. And I would have got right right Tyler Hero in his contract yeah. and would have been diva, okay. And, and he's a diva ass. He's a diva. So you that's the only way that you might say they got better. But again, rookie. So what are your true expectations of, of him? I don't know what the expectations are. They did not get better as a franchise. They are no closer to winning than they were last year. But 
People want to live on this. They want to sit here and make excuses. LeBron, power to you, my man. You, you played your big joker. You won. And now your team is going to be a 45-win seven seed again. I'm done. We'll see. I'm done. So let's move on to our next topic. I mean, we could – you want to talk about Paul George with Philly real quick or no? DeMar, DeMar DeRozan to the Heat's a, a rumor right now. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, uh, you know, DeMar DeRozan rumoring to the Heat. You know, what are your thoughts of if the Heat pick up DeMar DeRozan? I think that would be humongous. If if the Heat pick up DeMar DeRozan, um, it just gives us another player that we could count on to, to put the ball in the bucket. He could still do that efficiently. Um, mid-range killer. Um, our, he's shooting a three a little bit better. Um, and then – Combined, like, three years ago, this would have been fucking terrible. Combine DeRozan with Jimmy Butler, but now Jimmy Butler's a good three-point shooter. You're still not sprinting out there to go guard him, but he's, you know, more than respectable as he shoots it over 40%. And DeRozan has been, you know, shooting it over 33 35% lately or 36 He's been, you know, he's been respectable from the three-point range. So um, I'm okay with it, man. As long as you get another score, another wing defender, another wing player, in the in the in the East right now, where people are stacking up the wing players, um, that's a good move for the Miami Heat. I like it. Does it put us over the top? No, I think we need Laurie Markkinen. That'll be the move that I go after. We need another big who who goes next to Bam, who can rebound, who's athletic, who can stretch the floor because Bam can't do it. And then so Bam doesn't have to guard all the bigs all the time. Don't go out there and pick out a 50-year-old Kevin Love to be that the man's sidekick. We need another big who could actually move, stretch the floor, and actually have some size. We can't put Caleb Martin at the fucking four. I mean, that's just not happening, man. So the Heat got to get another person. I don't think DeRozan is the needle mover. You go and get Laurie Markin. You make it happen. Well, the, Caleb Martin will be gone. He's not yeah, going to resign. Exactly. He's not. He's not resigning with the Heat. I'm thankfully. talking about previously, though. Yeah, I thank, him before. Thank, thankfully, Caleb Martin won't resign with the Heat because that was a flipping disaster that we wouldn't dump him last year um, because he fucking tricked us in that playoff series against Boston. Uh, the, the, look, Demar Derozan, he shot. He played 79 games. He's going to play. He's not going to miss games. If you look at his career, guy doesn't really miss games. He played almost 38 minutes a game last year. He led the league in minutes per minute, minutes played. Okay. He shot 48%. He's a heat killer. He, he averaged 24, uh, 24, four, five and 5.3 assists and 4.3 rebounds. The Heat have a problem scoring. And, yes, I think we need size. That's why I wanted Zach Eady so badly in the draft. I, I'm very happy that kid got drafted because another guy who was getting completely dumped on and now he's with Memphis, and my God, I think John Morant is going to have a freaking field day with that dude. Um, and Jaron Jackson will be able to actually allowed to play his position. But DeMar DeRozan would be a massive pickup for the Heat. You know, I think he'd be a massive pickup. I would have, realistically, I would gut the whole goddamn roster um, outside of Jimmy and Bam, and I would dump everything to go. If you can find a way to make these numbers work, mm -hmm. um. I would be going after DeMar DeRozan and Laurie Markkinen. Yes. And, and I, and this is what I was talking about. Like owners who have the ability to spend money and they choose not to because they don't want to be in the tax or they don't want to get taxed to death. And I mean, Mickey Harrison's guilty of this as well. He's not wanted to get taxed. And this guy's a mega billionaire. Damn. So it, it, yeah, he's a mega billionaire. So this, this stuff about, that's why I say to me, it's more about, Money than it has ever been about winning. Yeah, winning is an, is is great, but the Heat the Heat have been sold out for a decade, over a, over a decade. They have the second longest home sellout streak behind the Dallas Mavericks. Even though it don't Mavericks look like it, huh? Even though it don't look like it, but they, does, but, but the, people have bought tickets. They might just be in. No, high. it's about they, buying tickets. It's they might be. In, show. They who might cares be who high. shows up? They might be in in, in traffic on ninety five. <laughs> I have I have season tickets to the Heat, as you know, and I, I tell you right now, people are underneath the arena in the multi. There's various clubs in the AAA Kaseya Center now. Various clubs. There's the Hyde, which they call it something else now, courtside club. There's one that's for like the real big ballers on, mm -hmm. on each side of the court. Like they have clubs all over this arena, so half the people in this arena are watching game this game on television in these clubs, or they not sitting that. in their seat. Huh? It's not that base side at Hooters and, and, and one of the little waitresses. And, 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 for those who are not, and for those who are not from Miami, getting to the, the arena is impossible in rush hour. It takes forever. 
Mm -hmm. It's not like any other place. There's no public transportation that really gets you there. Yep. So it's a nightmare. And, and downtown Miami has been under construction forever. So <laughs> it, it, it's one of those tough places to go. And if it rains, people just don't want to go. But the games have been sold out since like 2009, you know, every game. And um, I think it'd be a big pickup for them right now. The Heat's off season has been pretty off oh. and very quiet and depressing. So, yeah, we did resign Kevin Love to the exact same deal. I thought he was going to leave, but we resigned oh, him. Oh, snap. We got Kevin Love? Yeah, he came back oh, for two man, years. Oh, Kevin same Love. Way. Yeah. This 2000 I, I, I like him off the bench. I like him off the bench. I just, you know, and then Thomas Bryant was resigned for a oh, year. Oh, my but... gosh. Thomas Bryant is back again. Exactly. So, also, we'll never fucking play. We even know yeah, we the, need him the big. The guy, oh, yeah, man, I play. can't believe we got him back. So, okay, uh, uh, all right, so let's look at Paul George. Paul George uh, abandons Kawhi Leonard and that disaster. The worst trade in NBA history. Um, <laughs> Paul George is now with the Sixers. Is this, what is, what do you call this? Um, is this um, glitz and glamour or is this, is this real? Uh, uh, it's, it's a good move, but that athletic trainer <laughs> and that conditioning fucking coach are going to need a fucking raise to deal with this team. Um, you got to deal with Embiid injuries. Paul George has been hobbled. He played last year, so he's been hobbled. He's been hobbled, but it was a contract year, so of course he played because he wants to get paid. Um, but on paper, Maxi, PG, and Embiid, Oubre, you add Drummond, you add Eric Gordon. That's a nice little squad that they got going on there, but the training staff is going to be working overtime, double time, triple time. You know when the playoffs come around. Hmm. Do I trust playoff P? Him and Tobias Harris in the playoffs are <laughs> quite the same. So in, in, in certain moments, they get really quiet. So did they really upgrade? I mean, it depends on the on the day of the week. I mean, which Paul George am I getting? Am I getting the great Paul George, who's the GOAT for Brandon Miller? Or am I getting playoff P, way off P, Missed five for 18p. I don't know. Two for 20p. I don't know. Like, I don't know what I'm going to get from him. I don't know if MB is going to show up to play that day. But on paper, it looks goddamn good, man. Because Paul George could do everything. He could shoot. He could dribble. He could defend. And he also could show up like the fucking scarecrow without a heart. Or, I mean, the tin man without a heart. So, I don't I don't know which, which person I'm going to get that day. So, I'm all for it, man. But they had to make a move. They they had to cap the you know, um, the the what's the president, the GM, Daryl Morey had you know he's been making room. He told James Harden, "Fuck you," last year because he already knew that he was gonna make a better move. And we already saw what James Harden's career was going. I don't even know how this man got two years for seventy million. Um, this crook, <laughs> he's damn good at what he does. Um, but then again, everybody's getting paid, so I can't even say that con that contract might be a steal, but. James Harden is going to give me 16 and 8, and that's what I'm getting $35 million for? No way. Um, but back to uh, Philly, they have a good roster. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a tight race up there in the east. You got Milwaukee. You got New York. You got Boston. Um, Indiana's going to be a sleeper. Um, can't count out um, some, oh, Boston, that top. And then who else? The All, right. Heat. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. We'll be a, we'll be a seven seed again playing team. Yeah. Man, um, you know, if we get the two so, people that we talk about, I love I love Joel Embiid. You already know that. I love. Yeah. I, I think he, with healthy 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 Joel Embiid plays the right way, coached the proper way, is the best player in basketball. But that's not their case. He's not he's not healthy. He's not coached the right way. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, how much of the ball goes around? And I've always thought that Paul George is the softest softest star in the league. He's cream puff. Um, he's a cream puff to me. I, I don't think he's tough. I think when it matters, he disappears. So yeah, it's a good, it's a great move for them. They should be better. They okay. should be, make them, it should, it, realistically, it should make them the one seed in the East. Um, to, if, if, if healthy, if they're all healthy and they play talent wise, they're more talented than the Boston Celtics now. Joel no. Embiid, I mean, if you want to talk about big three, a big three, I think the big three thing is played. I think you have a team, you need a team. Mm -hmm. And B, Maxi has developed into a star. That's the guy. He's a star. The ball needs to be in his hands, and he needs to control the t control tempo, pace, and play. And 
get Joel Embiid's big ass into the post. I actually cannot wait to see Memphis play Philly. Well, you have two large centers and finally make Joel Embiid guard someone in the post. Man. I, I look forward to it. The shenanigans. Because I, I'm waiting to see the league refor- go back to how it used to get played the proper way. Because Steph Curry is going to retire soon enough as well. And the three-point shooting facade of the league is going to eventually trickle down. The way the way everything it goes in cycles. No way. Have you seen AAU basketball? Yeah, it's bad. It's bad okay, basketball. So, the, so it's three, bad the basketball. Ball is, the three ball is here to stay unless they move it, the line back a little they bit. They should. I told you, they should move to 28 feet and then we get rid of all the fake shooters. So yeah, it'll, um, change, it'll change. It'll definitely change the dynamics of the, of the game. You get rid of all four right now. Definitely move, the, it, move it back to 28 feet right now. Make get rid of the fake shooters. So yeah, so we'll get in it. We'll go. We'll go back to because they're shooting the ball from 20. They're shooting from 28 feet as it is. The real shooters. So the fake shoot. The fake shooters kiss the line. Yep. So. So you take uh, away the corner three. The corner yeah. three is out the game. Well, I don't think you take it away. I think you need to widen the court, like I told you. Widen the court, lengthen the court, make it a bigger court. You know, uh-huh. make it a bigger court. But I, 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 we also saw in the playoffs what happens to all that wonderful offense. It goes away. Your legs, you know, your legs. You lose your legs. Yeah. So um, let's jump into the next topic here. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Malik Hooker. He plays for the Dallas Cowboys. And he had some. Keyshawn Johnson was he had, was on Keyshawn Johnson's podcast. Everyone's got a podcast. They're all trying to be like us. Everybody's trying to they're, be like us. They're not like they're not like us, right? And like Kendrick Lamar says, they're not like us, right? So I almost wonder that if Keyshawn Johnson completely set this dude up. If there's a hidden agenda with Keyshawn. I thought he was a Dallas Cowboys fan. Like, why would he why would he ask this guy this question about his thoughts on Michael Parsons having a podcast? Because he didn't think he was gonna be foolish enough to say the shit that he said. They're like he he asked him. Well, well let's go, let's tell go. the world let's tell the world what he said because not everyone knows what he said. Uh, let, let me read it. Let me read what he said. Keyshawn Johnson asked Malik Hooker, who is a veteran on this team, eight year player, honestly about how he feels about Michael Parsons' podcast. Honestly, man, and this is me. I'm one of those guys that's not into that type of stuff. Some guys it works for. You see the Jason Kelseys and mm-hmm. guys like that who are successful with the yep. podcast as well as performing on the field and having success with it. So I don't have a problem with it. I feel like a lot of guys, a lot of these guys, though, they just want to get on there. Sometimes they start falling into the part of just saying stuff for the clicks and having people come to view and stuff like that. I mean, I don't have have no problem with it. His answer should have stopped right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have no problem with that. For Micah, my advice would be just make sure that we're all right and being where your, being where your feet are. Because if we're working out, and the run game is terrible. He meant run defense. But you're a, doing a podcast every week, and you know the run game is terrible. Then what are you really caring about? Are you caring about the crowd that's watching your podcast, or are you caring about the success of our team and the Super Bowl that we are trying to reach? Go ahead. Rudy, Keyshawn asked that question because you know what he's supposed to do? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You're not supposed to answer that question. You don't. First of all, you're not supposed to talk about other people's pockets and the situation that's going on. You're not supposed to be like, oh, we got to pay this guy. You're not supposed to pick favorites, first and foremost. You know deep in your mind you have your favorites, but you don't go out there on a podcast in this media world right now and say that. You just keep it quiet. But one thing that we do know, that that next to the next to the Kardashians, the Cowboys are the best reality TV show on the planet, like between Jerry Jones, uh, 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 you got that trying to be quiet, but you know he's frustrated with contract situations. So he kind of, you know, his family is hopping in on things. His brothers, uh, uh, you got the CD Lamb mom talking about the quarterback after the game. Like all of them, all talk about each other on that team. I, I, I'm surprised that team wins as much as they do during the regular season because it looked like a catastrophe every freaking year with how they mount runs them into so, so much situation. If they just shut the freak up, like every team you go into the preseason, you go into the off season, and hey, we say limit, limit the distraction. We don't want no distraction, but the Cowboys is like, bring on the distraction. Come on. We welcome it. Let's, let's, let's keep talking about us. We, we haven't won since 1962. I'm, I'm, 
obviously I'm I'm going a little bit far with that, but they haven't won since 94, 95, whatever year that was with Dion's there, 96. And they seem to find to get in the media and talk like they have won the past two years. Like you would think that they're Pat, they have Patrick Mahomes on their roster and Andy Reid is their coach. And they have the Lombardi in their fucking office every year the way they, they go on the media and they talk and they ramble in it and they, and they act like they're, they're that team. And I and, and for the sake of you, I don't understand it. They find a way to be there. Every okay, year. Let, let, let me reel you back in. Yeah, please, we're going please, up. Please, okay, please. how would you feel if you were Micah Parsons? I feel we, we have to squabble. We I'm asking because we were in the locker room. You we have football. to squabble. How would you feel? We have to squabble, Rudy. Because why would you go out there and say that? Like, because you really took a shot at me when you really didn't have to. I'm like Michael Parsons said, I'm your locker mate, bro. Like, you could have literally, you have my number. You could have called me and tell me how you feel. I go out there every week. I put my 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 damn life on the line or my you know my body on the line every week, and I give you my heart and soul. And I go out there and I get sacks. I'm not a damn run stopper. <laughs> like. You expecting me to first of all, you expecting me to stop the run. I'm not a run stopper. I'm a linebacker, but y'all put me at the end because I'm so gifted at what I do to get to get freaking pressure at, on the quarterback, and I'm the best to do it. So in third down situations is, and long, that's really really what I should be down there. But I play this position for the most of the game, and they run at me. I'm freaking 245 pounds or whatever he is. He's not. He's going against 300 pound ends. I mean tackles. He's not in the best situation, guys. So, of course, he's not going to be that great at run and stopping. So, on a day when I'm off and I go on podcast and you bring that up, when I come every week and I and I put it on the line, that's bullshit, bro. We have to squabble. The first day you see me in the locker room, throw up your set. We got to duke it out real quick. After that, we could be friends again. We could figure it out. We could hash it out after that. But that was just drunk. You went across the line. How can you figure it out after you squabble? Right, you, I, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times, men, this I'm, I'm, one, it's a we're asking you, I mean, it's a difference between was... men and women, men, we could fight we can, and then after we could sit down and we could have a beer and we could talk about it and we move past it. But hands have to get thrown at least a little bit at first yeah. to, just to understand the magnitude of this situation. So you don't do it again. It's I don't so need to be a habitual line stepper. And the only way I'm going to stop you from being a habitual line stepper is for me to be a habitual squabbler with you for the moment. <laughs> So did you? So the question now goes to this: You mentioned that men are not like women, yet men are recording every moment of their locker rooms now, like women. Well, in fact, worse than women. They, they, I saw a fight that took place in, at University of Kentucky in the locker room where one lineman, I mean, he beat the brakes off that other dude, and mm-hmm. and no one stopped it. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, how can you? And this is recorded now, posted yeah. on social media, You're right. embarrassing as hell. It can die in the locker room, but these players are making it live forever. Jordan Poole with Draymond Green. Mm-hmm. Draymond Green. Draymond, Draymond Green's a That's punk. That's the problem. Like, this stuff is recorded now. They're posting. What would stop this from being posted on social media? Because I guarantee you, when they go to oh, first day of, of, of camp, the next time those guys see each other, the teammates are going to all have their phones up recording that shit, waiting to see if – and so they're just as bad. And it take, and it's only going to take – and it might be cool <clears throat> at first, but it just takes one moment for you to say the wrong thing in a meeting or on the field for me to be ready to pop off on you just because it's, it's, it's bad blood between us because I don't trust you anymore. Like, you're supposed to be my teammate. You're supposed to hold me down. And then the first moment you get – you go on the podcast with Keyshawn and you just throw me under the bus, like – for what? Like there was no reason for you to put me under under the bus when I was and I'm your guy or I'm your teammate. And then you tell the world that I should get paid third out of everybody on the out of the three players that need to be signed back. So now you don't even think I'm important enough to be on this defense because Oh, he said that too? Oh, he said he said I would you know, first I would go for C D Lamb or or Dak, those people out there. Well, I mean yeah, I would go for those two <laughs> also but first. That's but... not that's not the point, Rudy. The point is that you said that on this show for no reason, like oh, you're picking favorites. Like we, shit. we understand it on the outside and even in the inside of the locker room, they know what's up. They know who should be signed. You know, you know who's good or who shouldn't be getting paid the way they're getting paid or, you know, the should, who should wait or who should be the odd man out. But you don't go out there and say that loudly. So Keyshawn Johnson turned into Shannon Sharp interviewing Cat Williams. 
Um, my, Michael Parsons actually replied and he tweeted or whatever. He seemed cool. Just, just wish you said this to me, but instead on some podcast, and you got my my number, family, and you you my locker mate. Yeah. And you could I don't know if that means he sits next to him in the locker room or if he's like in the locker room. With, huh? That what that means? Like, like right next to him. Probably. Like yeah. Okay. yeah. So you could have said this any day, and you do realize I shoot the podcast on our off day. Why ain't we talking about everyone preparations and focus? He since deleted that. I, I have you ever seen that happen in your locker room? No, I have no? never. Damn, I wanted a story. You what? Somebody doing like that, going to the media and, and talking about their own team. I have personally, I have not seen that in my locker room, but. <laughs> Yeah, the teams that I've been on lately have been good. Like, we might say something behind your back, you know, a little bit, you know, but. So tell me a story about that. About what? It's talking about. You just said talking about someone behind their back. Come on, tell me a no, story. No, I mean, like, first of all, like, the main thing, the main thing, like, in the CFL. We'll we save see... that for, come on, come on, CFL. Okay, That's okay, what we'll okay, save that for. We'll save that. But we'll save that for. There be huh? some third round picks or fourth round picks that come to the CFL and are God awful. You'd be like, damn, you made it to the league. And. You know that this person's gonna get cut soon, and we're just like, damn, is this what the league is presenting? Is this they making it here? But oh, it, I know what happened. What happened? What happened? LeBron made a call. Cut it up. Cut it up. Cut it up. LeBron made a call. Someone did some nepotism thing there. Cut it up. Cut it up. <laughs> Cut it up. Come on now. I, I, my, my quick thought on this is it's a real Malik Hooker's on. He's way out of pocket. It, I understand how he might feel and how it might look because I think a lot of these athletes doing podcasts while they're playing is just ridiculous. I don't like it. I think it le- it opens up so many can worm you can a big can of worms because you will have teammates that think, man, this person's really focusing on this podcast. We're we're professional football players. Your focus should be football. During football, it's football. It's not podcast. It's not bull crap. When you're I guess the assumption is that everyone's Tom Brady, so when you're on your off day, you're supposed to be watching film and relaxing. And, and, and I don't know. I'm not, I've never been in a locker room like that at that level, so I don't know. But I think he's way out of pocket. I think he really needs to learn to shut the freaking hell up and understand that he just got set up by Keyshawn Johnson. And Keyshawn Johnson just got some hellified viral clickbait for his podcast. Good job, Keyshawn. You did your job. You got what you wanted. And you just made a real bad situation in Dallas because I thought you were a Dallas fan. I think Jerry Jones needs to dump Malik Hooker, get rid of him, because this is not going to end well. This is not a fix. To me, this is not a fixable situation. If I'm Michael Parsons, I can never look at that man the same way again. He embarrassed me publicly. That is just not. It, it just doesn't work. And I mean, I, I'm not an expert on the Dallas Cowboys. I don't even know how good Malik Hooker is or not. But he damn sure ain't Michael Parsons. He damn sure ain't Michael Parsons. He ain't damn sure ain't Michael Parsons. So even if their run game sucked versus Green Bay. Michael Parsons is a, is a rush outside linebacker. He's not there to stop the run. No. And, and, he, and, he's, and he's still their best defensive player. So what were you doing, what were you doing, Malik Hooker, when Jordan Love was picking y'all apart? Why were, you, you don't have a podcast. So you should have been watching <laughs> film. You should have known so everything that was coming. You should have known everything that was coming your way from that, cook, rook, that, that young quarterback who barely, who's in his first year, really real year of playing. I just think it's a horrible look. I don't like the I, like I can't stand that Draymond Green stuff. Like this guy gets on podcasts. I don't like it because there's you're talking like you're nothing good is gonna happen from active players talking. I would not have recommended you do any podcast as an active player because yeah because it, it, you can hit slippery slope topics that can get you in trouble and it's not worth it. Yeah, so. I think Malik Hooker is uh, is way out of pocket. I think Jerry Jones should get rid of his ass um, because, I mean, what? I don't it's, think there's anything that's going to isn't and anything good will come from it's it. It's Not worth it anymore. Like it's not worth it. And and I, if I'm Michael Parsons, I can never look at that dude the same way again. At all. So so um, you have anything left before we go to the next topic? No. Um, shout out Dallas Cowboys, baby. Um, another year of doing good in the regular season and. Home in the first round. <laughs> All right. So now we jump into our favorite topic of the day, our favorite uh, basketball player in the world. That is the one, the only Caitlin Clark. Okay. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese both made the All-Star team. What are your thoughts? They uh, Caitlin Clark was the number one overall vote getter. 
for popular vote. Oh wow! In the in the WNBA, wow. she was Caitlin. She was yes, she was. No, no it was no, not. not. The popular vote was yeah. the, the popular vote. Number mm-hmm. one was Caitlin Clark. Number yeah. two was Aaliyah Boston. Number three was Asia Wilson. Yeah. Um, now I don't know what that final vote was when they include the players and media, mm-hmm. but it'd be really hard pressed to tell me that Caitlin Clark is probably not in the top three. Yeah. Um, maybe Asia Wilson passed her, but the thing is the the, the, the fan vote is 50%. So, <clears throat> and even the hating haters in the league that cannot stand Caitlin Clark, it's hard to sit here and say that they wouldn't have voted her knowing what they're, how they're defending her to keep her from embarrassing them. What are your thoughts on these two ladies making the All Star team? Man, cool, man, good job for these two ladies, man. They came in, um, they came in with a lot of pressure on their shoulders to to bring what they brought to the um, college game to the WNBA, and so far they're both succeeding. Um, Angel Reese has been on a double double machine, even though a lot of them are offensive rebounds, but lately they've been defensive rebounds also. I mean. She's getting 14, 15, 18 boards. She's finding that it's her niche. She's um, she's at, um, she's Hartenstein, man. She's Hartenstein of the of the WNBA, man. She's gonna attack the board. She's gonna attack the glass, and she's doing it at a freaking excellent, you know, at an excellent mark right now. She's every game. She's bringing that effort, that dog, that rawness every night, man. And she deserves the All Star vote. Um, Caitlin Clark, on the other hand, um. She's a triple double machine. She's well, a cl- near triple double machine every night. Um, she's out there. She's getting 10, 12, 13 assists. I think she's third in the league in assists now. She's slowly creeping at two and um for Thomas at one. Um, and as a rookie, that's just tremendous numbers all around. I think she's averaged 17 points a game. Her field goal percentage is going up. Um, she's getting five, six rebounds, she's getting a block a game, she's getting damn near. 1.5 steals a game. So all her numbers all around with how she's being guarded, it just shows that she's an all-star talent because she's getting guarded 85 feet down the court. I'm tired of saying it, and I don't I don't see how people don't understand this. There was a clip where – there's a clip. There's a clip where a girl was shooting free throw. She had two free throws. She shot the first one, and she went to go deny – she went to go deny Caitlin Clark the ball. And the referee's like – um, ma'am, Miss Ma'am, you have another free throw. Oh, my bad. Let me shoot this one. And that's how scared that these players are of Caitlin Clark and her impact on the game. Now, they're not getting enough wins right now, but you can just see her impact. And she had a couple of other players with her that could roll with her. Um, I like Mitchell. She could play basketball, but her and Caitlin just don't coexist the way I would like them to co- coexist. Mitchell should be driving. She should be looking for Caitlin. Just like Caitlin drives and she looked for Mitchell, that's how they should be working together. And I just don't get that from Mitchell. I see, like, Mitchell get the ball and it's just, okay, I got to go get – when I get it, nobody else matters. It's all about me. And then Caitlin and Aaliyah have been, you know, progressing. But all in all, um, just come to say it, it's, it's good. It's a good thing for the league that both of these players are in there. Um, they bring in a lot of fans to the league, a lot of eyes, a lot of new eyes, new fans, me. Hey, I'm here, Rudy. Hey, he's here. Um, we're paying attention. We're looking at the schedule. Like, as a man, usually around this time, it's dead period. There's nothing to watch on TV. And I actually look forward now. I, I look forward to, hey, when does um, when does Caitlin play? Or even when does Reese play? And I might even catch a couple other teams playing. But these two rookies have been sensational. They brought our eyes. They brought viewership. And they've been backing up their shit on the court. So you had to go and lie at the end. What you Did might I... you you might actually watch these other teams play? We know that's a lie. Asia, I'll watch Las Vegas. Yeah, when they were playing Indiana. No, no. <laughs> I, yeah, no, no. I'll watch. <laughs> I've 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 had the game on this. I have see you guys see behind. I got three TV screens. I've had a game up on the top that wasn't involving Caitlin Clark, and I've had something on the big screen behind it, and another another screen. And I'm honest about it. It's on, but my eyes aren't really watching. Yeah, I, I they're not really paying attention to it. I can't sit here and lie about it and say that they are. Um, I think it's I, I think it's a great honor for both of them. Um, I am hypercritical of Angel Reese 
I I don't like her game at all, but I'm I, I gotta give credit to where it's due. Yep. She plays hard. It's not the prettiest thing to watch. <laughs> it is, it, you know, her offensive skills are bad. It 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 looks very. Uh, I mean, when I saw her do a jump stop on a fast break layup, I it just it's cringy. By herself. By herself, uncontested fast break jump stop layup. She has no. Uh, she just tosses the ball in the air, hopes it goes in. When it doesn't, she goes and chases it down to grab it. And that's what a lot of her rebounds. I mean, there was a stat that came out today, and I'm, and I'm not trying to shit on her now, but that Caitlin Clark has almost as many defensive rebounds as Angel Reese. Um, that said, she plays hard, and yes. and, and, and if you have got if you, if people play hard, good things are going to happen, mm-hmm. and good things are starting to truly happen for her. I mean, I think she had 19 rebounds yesterday. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's a lot of rebounds, whether you're missing to yourself or not. <laughs> um, it's a lot of rebounds. Um, <clears throat> so she's really coming along. Her shooting, her her shooting has gotten a little bit better. Um, you know, it was thirty three percent after like twelve to fourteen games, and now it's about thirty nine point thirty nine percent and change. Yeah, her, her and um. Kind of both at like 30 yeah. yards. It's just that Caitlin's yeah. shooting from 30 feet. In. Yeah. Except that one shooting 30 footers and one shooting two footers. Yes. That's um, and, and I've had people arguing me saying that she's being doubled and triple teamed. No, no, she's no not. nobody's doubling no, and triple teaming. No one's doubling, triple teaming Angel Reese. Oh, oh my gosh. Let's go double like, Angel I, on no. the block because she's just so. I, it, but she works her ass off. Like she's, rela- she's relentless. Really? And that is a, when you have little skill <laughs> offensively, that is a necessity. If, if the league was better, would she be an all star? Probably not. Um, I don't know. The, that, that motor, uh, that motor, that motor. No, well, I mean, my, if the league was better, I mean, like if there was thirty teams, like okay. would that be an all star? Like it'd be like Dennis Rodman. He was n- un- never an all. He was all star twice in his entire career. So I don't know. If that makes you an all star with a, a large league, but, but she still scores. Look, one of look, one she, of those layups. She. One of those rebounds, she gets it back and she makes the layup eventually. So eventually, she does score and get fourteen points a game. That's pretty solid. I mean, <laughs> so look, she works her ass off, and I respect it. I respect the hustle. I respect the grind. If she can ever get some level of a post game, a real one, not just toss the ball to rim, a real post game, I think she has a better. I think she. Ha- if you're gonna say a, jump, if, you, if you're gonna say jump shot, a like, mid range jump shot, I think it looks like it looks like Ben Simmons. I think if she has a better chance of making that than than the layups, because the layups is always low. No. It's not her, the throw up. I, well, this this goes back to lowering the rims. Like people don't like the idea of the lowering the rim thought. Lower the rim. Have, but lower, lower the rim. Lower the rim. Left. And 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 bring back the regular size basketballs. Because yeah. I hate seeing that small basketball. When it misses, oh, it misses so. There was, a, there was a there was a shot that I saw yesterday when Indiana was playing the Vegas, and the ball bounced on like every part of the rim. It's too small, and it went, and it went in. If that was a men's ball, that ball's not going in. It would have yeah. bounced off. It's like you see certain shots that go in, and that's why. And, and if people don't understand why we're, we're talking about, the women's ball is an inch smaller than a men's ball. Yep. The rim is not any smaller. It's the same size as a men's rim. Yep. So the ball is going to go in more when it's not on target. Mm-hmm. It just is because it has more lead. It's like throwing a tennis ball into the back into the basket. Yeah, it has more so room to miss. It has more room to hit shit and end up in. Yeah. That and and that said, they still shoot at a four percent to five percent worse clip than the NBA teams on average. Because they so can't that's. Do it. What? Because they can't finish layups a lot. Exactly. So when you tell me about players like Jewel Lloyd, if Jewel Lloyd could play the Indiana Fever every game, she'd shoot 60% from the field because the Indiana Fever are the worst defensive team in the league. The coach does not coach defense, and she goes off against them. But against anybody else, she's shooting 33%. And and Plum. She can't shoot. Huh? And Plum. And Plum, too. Plum went off yesterday. Against anybody else, she was in that thirty-six percent range. Plum had a beast of the game yesterday, but but it's because there's there's she wasn't being guarded. Like you watch them defensively, they're so bad. So that's why it's frustrating for people who are trying to make that move over to watch 
to watch this because you see like, dude, you have a smaller ball, the same size rim, and yet you miss more. It's not fun to watch. So that's why people are attracted to the Caitlin Clark thing. Caitlin Clark got a, got a lot of stuff to work on. Though. Yes. And, and at times she's really starting to frustrate me. So people say, oh, he never says nothing negative about Caitlin Clark. No, I'm, I'm critical. She doesn't run the pick and roll well in terms of running off the body enough. Yeah, I she, told you she that. She gets too much room. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's but her and Aaliyah Boston are really working it out a lot better. Mm-hmm. But she needs to run it tighter. Yeah. She needs to take she needs to take more shots. So she way- is open at she is open at times where she just doesn't take shots. And it, it, it gets a little bit like you have to shoot the freaking ball. You you weren't you weren't drafted number one to average ten assists and no. fourteen points. No. You were you were drafted number one to average twenty seven a game and ten assists. Yes. Yeah. And it starts with shooting the freaking ball. Yeah. And I understand they're double teaming her like crazy. They still double her all over the floor. So when you point out that thing about the, in that game where the girl jumped off the free throw and literally ran the hugger <laughs> seventy feet from the basket, it's like. You're 70 feet from the basket. And you got another free throw. You're like, like what are you doing? You look stupid. Now. No, it look, no, it shows the threat. It don't look stupid. It, yeah, no, it, it looks stupid threat. because you're, why are you guarding her at the opposite free throw line? Because I don't give a shit. You know what she brings <clears throat> on the court and her impact but on the she's court. She's shooting from there, man. She might. That's what she is thinking about it. If I, no, take she's it, not, if I deny but, her the ball, gonna, she don't have the ball, here, she can't shoot it. Here's what happened the last two games. The last two games that they played, they played against um, Phoenix on Sunday, yep. and they played Vegas the yesterday. Phoenix Suns. <laughs> the Suns? What do you mean? You said yeah, the, the Phoenix New- Suns? No, I said Phoenix on Sunday. Oh, Phoenix, oh. the Phoenix Mercury on Sunday. My bad. And and, and the, uh, yeah, I guess it, just, it could have sounded like that. <laughs> the Phoenix Mercury. Um, now you got me all. Now you got me all messed up. So the Phoenix, <laughs> the Phoenix Mercury on Sunday. And they played the Las Vegas Aces yesterday. They were down. They beat the Mercury. They lost to the Aces. They were down six going into the fourth quarter. They had a complete meltdown the first four minutes of the fourth quarter and just got blown out the building. But this is what we talk about when we talk about impact. Mm-hmm. This is the impact of this player. Tell him, Rudy. I'm pulling it up so I can give you the exacts. Um, on Sunday, Camila Copper. Who averages twenty three a game? Let him know, Rudy. Her job, her job was to guard Caitlin Clark. She sacrificed her offense to get, guard Caitlin Clark. She went three for fifteen for seven points. They lost by yep. six. Yesterday, I'm pulling it up right now. Yesterday, they played the Aces. The person on the Aces whose job was to guard Caitlin Clark was Jackie Young. Jackie Young averages 19 a game. She's an Olympian. Jackie Young was 5 for 16 for 15 points. That's a very inefficient game. She did have 10 assists. Um, So obviously she made her presence felt in other ways. But offensively, Kaylin Clark wears these people out by them defending her. They're exhausted. They shoot awful when they play her because – they defend her in the 75 park. to 80 feet of the court. From the parking lot, baby. And that is what an imp- that's the impact that Caitlin Clark has on the players defending her because they're exhausted mm-hmm. by the time the game is over. And they, they are focused so much on defense and stopping Caitlin Clark. What happened yesterday with the Aces simply was that you had three players show up and the other rest of the team for the Indiana Fever just didn't do anything. It just didn't do anything. It did nothing. So <clears throat> kudos to both both these young women. It's a great honor. And I, I think it'll be even better to see if they both start because they both should start just because the WNBA is trying to actually show that it matters um, to people. And I would like, I mean, I think they should both start in the game. I think they need to recognize that look, this is a marketing deal. And Caitlin Clark is the best guard in basketball. I don't care what anyone says. She's the best guard in basketball in, w, in, in the WNBA. <laughs> uh, Any final thoughts on that one? No, I, I, I agree. She's the best guard in, in basketball. Um, cause you, you can see, cause look how she get guarded. <laughs> look no further than that. <laughs> so, um, that's about all I got today, Nick. Unless you have some final thoughts, final words. Um, 
I think that's it for today. I think we'll find something that happened later on in this week. Oh, Clay Thompson. Did we go on that? We didn't talk oh, about yeah. okay. okay. I mean, we did briefly. I mean, cool. he told LeBron no. I guess he's the only one that LeBron couldn't, you know, strong arm. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna. You know, we we had a. Oh, you know what? Let's do this real quick. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch the UFC 303 last week? Who me? Yeah. Oh. No. The answer is no. No, I didn't watch it last week. No, I have. Well, no, I see. Look, Donald, our producer is making faces in the background, but I, I have watched a couple recently. All right. You know, Rudy. Rudy has put me on, and you know. I, I peeped a little bit. I'm gonna get more and more into it. But last, well, no, I'll, I'll do. I, well, we're doing that well, just to bring people the, up up to speed. We are doing. Uh, uh, you know, Nick, we're Nick with Nick. We're doing the CFL. Come on, CFL. I do some combat corner on the side as well. Um, there's some big things popping off there. We did inter. I did interview um, BKFC featherweight champion Kai Stewart last week. Yeah. Uh, I do have another interview scheduled this Friday with a BKFC bantamweight champion, Alberto Blas, who just won the belt at the Hard Rock in, in Hollywood. So we are digging deep into BKFC. We will be digging into the UFC as well with bringing out interviews and, and faces that you know, and maybe faces that you don't know that, you're, that, are, that we're trying to help get you know publicized out there. But Alberto Blas is a Cuban-born uh, BKFC fighter. He had a ridiculous win um to win the championship and uh we will be having him on friday i will do my best because the english language uh barrier will be in play here so i may have a uh, google translate on with me <laughs> <laughs> so it should be fun um but just to pop off real quick about last week's ufc 303 alex Pereira came up with the devastating knockout oh, over Hedy prohachka the he knocked it, he knocked his head clean off with a head kick. I saw that. Um, he dropped him at the end of round one with a left hook. And if there had been 10 seconds left in the round, the fight would have been over. He gets up. He goes back to the corner. You're like, this fight's going to be over the second Alex lands a shot. And that's literally what happened. And I think Herb Dean needs to go back to referee in school because he almost got this man put into, into, into the morgue. Because he land, Alex lands this head kick. Oh my gosh! Uh, Yuri hits the deck, and the fight's over. It was over. Yeah. And then Alex landed like ten more shots, and then oh, Herb Dean finally decided, you know what? Last fight was stopped a little too quickly in some people's opinion. I'm gonna let this one go, and um, go it did. Alex Pereira Poetan is the scariest. Dude in the UFC, you know, there is the opinion and the commentary from folks saying, uh, why don't we get uh, him in there with John Jones? And of course, you know, John Jones only wants to fight one old man in Stipe Miocic, uh, which <laughs> now is supposedly rumored for Madison Square Garden in November, as it was supposed to be last November in Madison Square Garden. I mean, maybe by the time Stipe's in a wheelchair, we'll get that fight. But Dana White went on a tirade mm -hmm. about how John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time. John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time, in my opinion. Does it make him the pound for pound best fighter in the world right now? No, you got to fight. We got to stop this. John Jones has not fought and will not have fought in two years by the time he gets back in there. If he gets back in, because I, I can't say when. I, well, if, I don't know when. I don't well, know if it will happen. And before huh? that, it was it was before that it was a while before that, right? Yeah, he hasn't fought since March of last year, and before that, it had been like three or four years. <laughs> so it's like the guy doesn't fight. So I, I'm not going to sit here and and I, I mean, I thought he lost to Dominic Reyes years ago at light heavyweight. I thought the fight that he had with Tiago Santos, he arguably lost as well to a guy with two torn ACLs in that fight. Um, I still think he lost to Alexander Gustafsson years ago, the first one. So. There's been fights where John Jones has been tested, but no one's ever tested his chin. No one's ever truly chin checked him. And Alex Pereira, if he could, if, if he ever got that opportunity to fight John Jones at heavyweight, a weight in which Alex Pereira walks around 230, 235, he wouldn't have to cut weight. And if he could stay up 
and not get taken down. He is a six foot four guy. He's tall as hell as well. If he could chin check John Jones, I'd like to see if John Jones could take that shot. Will it ever happen? Probably not. Same way I will never see John Jones fight Tom Aspinall because he wants no parts of Tom Aspinall. So I just find it funny how Dana White goes to the ends of the earth to defend a guy that in the past he's completely taken a shit on. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, that's the that's the promoter game. I get it. It's the promoter game because before it was Jones is afraid of Ngannou. Ngannou's now afraid of Jones. And this, the, all these things, Ngannou got made a gazillion dollars to go box, which is something that Dana White should have opened his eyes to and realized, look, I have a gold mine here with this dude. The same, maybe not to the, maybe not to the level of Conor McGregor, but Ngannou made a boatload of money. A boatload of money. And now, I mean, I don't know if he'll ever fight again in terms of MMA, but I know he says that he's going to fight again. And I mean, he obviously went through the tragedy of his of his 16-month-old son passing away. Um, but Dana White has had this thing where he goes back with these fighters it's just it's annoying it gets annoying for me as a fight fan because it's like lebron james nothing they say you can believe (laughs) you can't believe nothing these guys say because every third word is a lie rich paul lies lebron lies dana white lies i love ufc but dana white i mean my god how many times he said this is the fight to make and a week later it's oh well you had a really good performance. This is the guy to make. Like, you know what the one fight? I, the one fight that I want to see made right now, and it'd be a fight that most people don't care, maybe not care about. The Ian Gary Michael Ben and Page fight showed a lot. It showed that Ian Gary is not that damn good. It, he showed he's just not that damn good because Michael Ben and Page can't wrestle at all. And MB and Ian Gary is known to be a striker, and Michael Page made him Page made him a wrestler. And if Michael Ben and Page just stayed on top in round three and not lost position. Not oh, sorry, lost. He just gave it up. He stood up. He had him on the ground on his back for two and a half minutes. He just stayed on top. Gary wasn't going anywhere. He couldn't get up. He was try- he was getting in a body triangle from the bottom. That doesn't get you off the bat off your off your ass. And instead he gets up, Gary gets his back and literally hangs on his back for two minutes, does nothing at all. And he gets the decision. Ended up being a very lackluster performance. I want to see Ian Gary fight Colby Covington. That's the fight I want to see. I want to see, and I want to, I love Colby Covington, but I'm sick of listening to Colby Covington talk shit about this guy's family, his wife, no matter what men may may think about the situation. I think that he would be a mess. It would be a, a great fight to see. Colby Covington, I think, would take him down. I think he'd win the fight. Um, but Ian Gary needs to show me a lot more than what the hell he showed me versus Michael Ben and Page to tell me that you're a contender because there's no way. There's no way. And one last thing that I want to mention. Dan Ige, Diego Lopez are two bad motherfuckers. Just to bring you to speed, Diego Lopez was supposed to fight Brian Ortega on Saturday. Brian Ortega pulled, Brian Ortega could not make weight. They bumped the fight up from a 145 fight to a 155 fight. Diego Lopez takes the fight. The next morning, Brian Ortega wakes up sick, has a 103 fever. Can't fight. Pulled out of the fight by, by, by Vegas, by the Nevada Commission. They called Dan Ige, who's in Vegas, who fought in February. They got all his paperwork. He's training for a fight next month. Mm-hmm. Dan Ige takes this fight on four hours notice. Dan Ige is a top 15 fighter, top 10 fighter in the division. They fight at 165. Dan Ige lost the first two rounds. He won round three. If that had been a five-round fight, Dan Ige might have won that fight because Diego Lopez gassed out. But those two guys, I got so much respect. That is just badass. And they're both now demanding to be on that card in September in the sphere, and they're both going to get it. And now Dana White said, I'll give those guys whatever they want. You know what Dan Ige asked for? You're supposed to say what? What, Rudy? He asked for <laughs> Ryan Garcia. <laughs> he says he wants Ryan Garcia because Ryan Garcia is now suspended from boxing for a year. Ryan Garcia is talking about being an MMA fighter. He said, Ryan Garcia, I will not wrestle. We'll have a stand-up fight. I will not wrestle. I don't think that's going to happen. 
But Dana White, you did say whatever they want. Make it happen. So go pay Ryan Garcia $30 million and let's make that shit happen. All right. That's all I got for tonight. Anything left, Nick? All right, real quick. What are you looking most forward to in the Olympics? Which which event? Oh, track and field. Track and field? You got a specific track, I mean, one? Track and, I mean, the 100. 100? 100? The men's and women's 100. Uh, I, I love, I mean, the, the event that Nick says... What? It's the easiest transition that the, anybody. The, 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 I know if you saw if you saw the video I sent you on Usain Bolt losing when he was younger with his the back. The easiest back. transition for any sport for somebody <clears> to make would be to track. I said it. Yes. Yes. I know. think of anyone I, of anything that somebody could come out of freaking on the side of the street and do will be the hundred meter sprint. Yes, I think that's so, probably so the there, easiest thing there, for somebody to do there, other than any other sport in the in the in the world: hockey, <laughs> basketball, football. Somebody could come out. Who, who's who's on the side of the street, uh, maybe a crackhead per se, because um, you know they're kind of fast and they can run a hundred hundred meter sprint and they might not look as bad as they try to play basketball, football, or any other sport. Yeah, oh, do- and- yeah, Donald. Remember Nick said uh, Donald's in the background. He's not on camera. Yeah, but yeah. Remember Guess Nick what? Said Guess he what? Ran a sub nine nine and a yeah, hundred. Yeah. And I'm yeah. gonna stand on that. You know, yeah, I, we, I didn't stand on it last people, time. You asked me a question when I answered. I didn't trust. Jesus who, I, didn't tr- I had to trust who the motherfucker I was. Yes, in my prime. A nine 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 ninety whatever the nine point ninety I could have I could have pulled it off yeah I I said it is to give me six months of training of of some damn getting out the blocks and 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 finishing that hundred yeah I would have did it because I right. was that damn fast. So you asked me the question that, that I love track I think track is the most exciting thing of the Olympics I do like watching swimming. Um, there's a swimmer, Katie Ledecky. I don't know if you know who she is, mm-hmm. but she, but Katie Le- Ledecky in her event, I don't know if it's the 800 or the 50. She runs, she swims long distances. Mm-hmm. She holds like the top 15 times of all time. Might as well not and show she up. Keeps, in her event. And she keeps breaking the record herself. Yeah. yeah she's, she's breaking racing, her own record. She's racing against herself. And she's racing herself. <laughs> um, there, there was a, uh, but I like swimming. I like, I love track. There's a kid now that you, you may not have heard of yet. His name is Kishane Thompson out of Jamaica. He just ran the fastest time in the world this year at 9.77, the Jamaican trials. You know, what's interesting about the Jamaican trials. They're playing this. They're, they're, they're in a stadium. That's literally half empty. Like no one goes. It's just weird. I thought that was like popular in Jamaica. Like they're to like track. It was empty. Uh-uh. Um, Somebody, but, be, but, somebody's making but, curry goat. And oxtail, that's what's more important right now. Eating. So he ran a, he, he ran a nine seven seven. Um that's gonna be a big comp the major competition for Noah Lyles and these guys from the US. In the two hundred though, there was a shocker. She Carrie Richardson did not qualify in the two hundred. She actually finished fourth behind Gabby Thomas, who was blistering fast. Lord have mercy, that girl. Oh, she was flying in that she race. And then, and then there's a the girl from that that just graduated, just left college. Forgive me, I forgot her name, but her mother passed away during the college season, and and she advanced. She came in second or third, mm-hmm. and then there was one. More, I mean, yeah, I fucked, I messed up here. I forgot the, the other two. I know Gabby Thomas. I know Shakari Richardson did not qualify. Mm-hmm. Um, Shakari had run twenty one nine in the in the earlier heats. It just didn't carry over into the final where she ran twenty two point like one six. Over. It didn't, over. It didn't it carry over. Shakari Richardson. Oh, it didn't, well, it, it, didn't, it didn't carry over. Didn't I mean, what you I, did there. This, this, no, I did not. It's disappointing. I mean, but she will be in the hundred meter. She will win the gold in the hundred meter. Will and um, she will win the gold in the hundred meter. And uh, we'll see. But yeah, track. I, I don't care about watching the U.S. basketball team. I don't care about. I definitely don't care about watching the U.S. women's basketball team. Uh, if they put Kate on there, you might watch. Do they? They yeah. If they do, then I'll watch. But. Are, do, do they still box in the Olympics? And I know they got rid of boxing for a minute in the Olympics. Boxing used to be the boxing in the Olympics used to be so awesome. I don't know what happened to it, but it used to be so awesome. The, the, it, you'd have these battles with the U.S. and Cuba and, and, and Russia. Like there was some badass boxers. Like and, and boxing just isn't the same in in the Olympics. I don't even know if wrestling still exists in the Olympics because I thought they took it out for a second. It might. I don't know if it's back or not. Um. I mean, ping pong is always great. Oh, ping pong is fun. <laughs> I mean, that shit is electric. Like, it's <clears> amazing <throat> to watch those players do what they do, man. Because you shouldn't be able to move and get to the ball like they do 
at the why, rate are, why, why are they all, why are they all asian why aren't there any american ping pong play i'm sorry table tennis my apologies to you guys um because because I, I i play table tennis and i'm sweating uh, to death uh, so it's lot, exhausting a lot of lonely nights in uh china to get that wrist to move <laughs> the way it does <laughs> that, 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 was, that might be that might be <laughs> Oh my God! Oh no, boy! I apologize. I apologize. Don't do that. That's hilarious, actually. Um, <laughs> oh my God! Um, what is your favorite? Um, what is your what? What event are you looking forward to, Nick? Oh man, I like the sprint, man, because I like comparing these the hundred meters to myself and saying, "Damn, I think I could beat them." Even though I might can't, but hey, I like looking at it and be like, no, I like seeing that guy in the back at 100 meters. He runs like a 10 3. And I'm like, 10 4. And I'm like, how did you make it? But he's from like some country that probably don't have anybody that can run. But, but, fast. you know, when you see that guy who's running a 10 3, 10 2, 10 4, whatever, 10 wow. That is fast as shit, man. <laughs> like, he's still fast as shit. No, he's shit. still fast as shit. But, you know, <laughs> But I'd be like, damn, I could take him. I know. But I I've seen, but I've seen some of the Americans in the past that qualified and then ran a bad race around ten three. No, I'd be like, I wish I was born in Chucka 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 La La country oh, that I could run for that country because they literally don't have anybody that's fast there, and they have to put somebody there to represent their oh, country. Well, well, go do an ancestry dot com test. Go check out your DNA and yep. see what where you're from. Your family goes back to, and maybe I'm, if you find. Bahamas. If you, I could probably run from Bahamas, if, man. Maybe if you find that you're from like if your family's from like, I don't know, Turkey. Yeah. You qualify for the Turkish national team as a <laughs> I might can do that. Let me go find out. Next year, 2028 Olympics. No, 2026. <laughs> when I'm 40. 28, Nick. Because we're in yeah. 24. It's every four years. But they, they have the little ones in like every two that's years. That's the world that's the world championship. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna do that one first. Come on, I can't uh, wait okay. till I'm 40. I gotta go win something. <laughs> all right guys that'll wrap it up for us um remember to subscribe follow like us uh tiktok instagram and facebook at come on now podcast and on x at come on now pod and check out our new show where nick is the feature it's gonna what? get good it's gonna get juicy gossipy and we're gonna get some stories Yep. This is going to start looking like some Club Shay Shay CFL stuff. I'm telling you yep. right now. First guest yep. this week, guys. And we're we'll, setting we'll, up more. Yeah, there will be a guest that's been set up. I don't know who it will be. but uh, Well, we already yeah. told him. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, by the way, Nick's Picks, if you're in Canada, go check it out on Instagram. It's on our Instagram page at Come On Now Podcast. His picks are up. Please be responsible. <laughs> that's all we got. Come on now. All right.